Hi everyone, it's Dutch Reefer here, and welcome to this latest Focus Friday video. Today's subject is um, the deficit of nitrates and how it can impact your tank. So, as you might already know, a, a balanced reef aquarium uh, requires that your water parameters are pretty stable. Uh, and any instability in any value uh, can have an effect on the way your tank looks or the way certain corals look or develop or even uh, the way some fish uh, behave. So it's all a delicate uh, ecosystem. Um, whereas um, well, certain values differ than you might see an effect on your tank. So of course the when you when you're used to keeping aquariums then you get a keen eye for this so you'll spot it easier um, so when you first start off you might not notice it until it's too late uh, and once you have a reef tank for several years then you might not even need to measure your water parameters because you can immediately see whenever when something is getting out of out of balance or out of hand um, so today, of course, like I mentioned before, I'm going to share with you my, some, ex some of my experience around nitrate deficit. It's something, a deficit, it's something I, I haven't had before in my tank. So for me, it was, uh, I had to, uh, I was worrying a little bit about uh, some changes happening in my tank. And I'll show you that in a minute, um, because I didn't know what was going on. And I thought, hey, uh, somehow some of my corals are starting are starting to deteriorate uh, and I can't really explain why that's happening uh, so then I uh, well because I I measure my water parameters about every month so I thought oh let's measure the water parameters and actually I noticed that my nitrates were very very low uh, I checked it uh, two times with two different uh, test kits so I'm fairly sure that it's uh, accurate and actually my nitrates are below one or around one and um, well as you have seen might have seen in my previous videos my tank is based around a quite high quite high uh, water parameters so high uh, uh, nutrients so my my nitrates are usually usually around 20 10 to 20 and my phosphates are around 0 0.3 0 0.4 which is actually too high so that's why I'm using uh, GFO um, to uh, to reduce at least the phosphates, and before I was using uh, bio pellets, which was actually a pretty pretty straightforward way to reduce nitrates and phosphates because they were NP pellets, so uh, they were both taking nitrates and phosphates out of the water and NP. Um, and as you might have already know, I have changed the bio pellets for Cheeto uh, Cheeto. Um, well, algae, macro algae. So I thought this process will take a while. The the, the Cheeto, uh, Cheeto might take a while to uh, to settle in, but that actually went a lot faster than I thought. Um, first, I'll show you uh, uh, some of the results that the uh, Cheeto has uh, Cheeto has uh, uh, has brought. So here you can see the ball of uh, of uh, macro algae that's in my tank right now. There's also some other Calerpa uh, in the back there which is also growing uh, quite alright but this big ball here that's what caused the main uh, nitrate uh, the, uh, the, the reason why the nitrates went down so much and you might think hey that's actually not so much it hasn't grown much when you compare it to before but it has actually because this morning I chose to I trimmed it down and this is what came out of it. So there's actually a big ball of uh, of, of Cheeto which I took out uh, this morning because it was yeah, it grew too much, and uh, now it uh, it can uh, regrow from this uh, original piece, or at least this is what I'm keeping. So actually, this is a very effective way to reduce nitrates very very effective I might even say so what I've done is I've uh, I chose to uh, decrease the amount of uh, NO 
three PO4X that I'm dosing as well. So, as you might know, I'm using this algae management system from Red Sea, NO3 PO4X, to reduce nitrates and phosphates, or mainly nitrates. Uh, and I was dosing around 25 milliliters a day, and I've, I've toned that down to 15 now. I can't immediately stop, so it's very unwise to uh, stop dosing carbon straight away. The system needs to get adjusted to it. So if you choose, for whatever reason, to uh, tone it down a notch on the carbon source, be sure to do that gradually. So I've done that. And now let's see why I thought, hey, something is wrong. And the answer is the Rhodactis. As you can see, and I'll show you, all the Rhodactis in my tank are not looking very happy. This one is very uh, small. These ones are shriveling a bit. These ones over there are also shriveling and lighting up. Uh, these Soantes are not looking the way they did before. This one, this Rhodactis also looks a bit uh, yeah, the, the colors are a bit faded. This product is right here. Also retracted, not looking so good. This uh, St. Thomas uh, Oscillofera product is also lost its beautiful bright colors and well, overall doesn't look so well. And other corals are doing fine, so don't get me wrong. It's not that my tank is dying or... Uh, that the, the complete balance is off, but these signals, these show that there's something not right. So uh, that's the reason why I started looking and then I found out that my nitrates were uh, decreasing much, much faster than, uh, than before and much more than I would like. So I took action. I reduced some of the Cheeto. I reduced the uh, uh, NO3PO4X dosing. And now slowly, uh, I hope that these corals, these Rhodactis corals, will uh, will recover. I don't think it's too late, but I definitely need to take action to prevent that they would eventually die. So that's a valuable lesson that I hope you can take from this video, is that uh, there's always a reason, if something happens in your tank and something is not doing well, there's always a reason uh, for it to happen. So start looking for it, and whenever you find that source, uh, address it and uh, make sure that you, uh, uh, yeah, that way you can save some corals. Might not save all, uh, but at least uh, by taking action, you will uh, reduce further harm to your uh, to your system. So that's the thing I wanted to share with you today. That was also a bit. Uh, because one of the viewers requested that I did an update on the Cheeto. Well, I did um, in this video. So, uh, the Cheeto is doing very well. Uh, the light source, people thought it wasn't sufficient for it to grow, but it's definitely sufficient. The Cheeto has been in there for a month. So, the fact that I've been able to, uh, uh, to trim off uh, a third of the total uh, Cheeto after just a month of, uh, of growth, I think that's a very good signal. It's... Um, it's growing uh, fast and uh, it's reducing a lot of nitrates. So while doing what it should do, um, be careful when you're adding too much or at least whenever you're adding macroalgae to your tank, uh, make sure that if you that well that you that you look after your water parameters. That's the most important lesson, at least for me that I've learned from this experience. So I hope this video was useful for you and. Uh, I'll uh, see you in the next one. I'll uh, shortly, uh, in, a, in a short while, I'll do a, a livestock update for Q3. So I'll show you uh, some uh, somewhat more of the corals in detail and the fish over the uh, and the way they, they have developed over the past uh, uh, few months. So that's it for the video today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something, and uh, well, have a nice weekend. Bye bye.